Action at Northwestern. More specifically, I work on the international team. Thank you guys so much for joining us today for this international experience um, kind of student panel. Um, I'm very excited to learn more about which kind of what kind of questions you all have. Um, and I'm also really excited to introduce you all to our fantastic and exciting student volunteers. Um, so I am going to pass things off. First, I will have Martin introduce himself and then Martin, if you don't mind kind of popcorning around the room, that would be fantastic. Hey, uh, my name is Martin. I'm a rising junior right now. I'm in Weinberg College. Um, oh, I should probably change my name to fix that. Um, and I study global health and Eastern European studies right now. And I'm right now in Evanston. I'm really excited for the school year to start and I'll give it off to Karina. Hi everyone, my name is Karina. I use she, her pronouns. I'm originally from London, but grew up moving around a lot, hence no accent. Um, I'm in the School of Calm, a rising junior, and I study theater and history. And I will pass it off to Chloe. Hi, I'm Chloe, she, her too. Um, I was born in Hong Kong and grew up in Shanghai. I am a first year uh, studying in SESPI, also known as the School of Education and Social Policy. Um, and I'm currently in Taipei. And I'll pass it off to our last panelist. Just... Hello world. Uh, my name is uh, Josip Bozovic coming from a sunny bar in Montenegro. Uh, I'm studying biomedical engineering. I'm rising junior. And in the spirit of, the me of this meeting, I would like to say Dobar dan i dobrodošli, which in my language means uh, welcome and uh, good afternoon. And uh, yes, I will pass, pass it back to Maddie. Thank you all. So um, I apologize for the technical difficulties we experienced. That said, I think we're going to have a really wonderful hour. Um, and I really hope that you're able to take some great things about the student experience away from this session. So as a game plan for today, I am going to give a brief introduction to Northwestern. Um, I'm going to touch on our location as well as the academic side of things. Um, and then of course, for anyone that is completing their final year of secondary school, I do want to go over the admission process just a little bit. Um, that said, as I'm speaking, feel free to start um, inputting any questions that you might have into the chat, whether they are general questions about the Northwestern student experience or potentially um, a more specific question regarding um, an academic program that one of our um, volunteers is participating in. Um, feel free to start throwing those in there now. Um, and then in about 10 minutes, I would say, maybe 15 if I talk a little bit longer, um, we'll get started on those questions. Um, so of course, I mentioned that I do want to talk a little bit about our location and um, our students can certainly talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I think that at least from my point of view, this is something that really stands out to our students. We are a really kind of quintessential, very pedestrian friendly college campus, definitely a traditional college campus. Um, but the really wonderful thing is that aside from that, we are located in the town of Evanston, which is a wonderful kind of community for our students to be a part of. And we're extremely accessible to the city of Chicago. So in terms of our campus, I mentioned that it's really pedestrian friendly and our students report that it takes no more than 10, sometimes 15 minutes to walk from one place to any other part of campus. To the east, you're going to find beautiful Lake Michigan, and to your west, you will find um, kind of downtown Evanston, the city of Evanston itself. Um, and when it comes to the town of Evanston, just for some context, um, it has a population of about 75,000 people. Um, so it's definitely kind of a more quaint community for our students to be a part of. And they really find that it has everything that they need from coffee shops, um, really great restaurants, um, fantastic beaches as well, especially in those summer months, um, just about a 10 to 15 minute walk from campus. But beyond that, 
The fact that we are so close to the US's third largest city, Chicago, um, really stands out to our students. So not only are they able to explore the city of Chicago during their four years at Northwestern, they're also able to take advantage of lots of professional opportunities, whether those are internships or research opportunities. Um, so I do like to touch on the city of Chicago and how to get there. Um, so there are two really easy ways to do that. We have um, what's called the CTA, and this is going to be the L, our elevated train system, which will take you from Evanston all the way downtown. But if you'd like a free option, we also have an intercampus shuttle for students. And this is going to be, again, free. It'll pick you up right in Evanston and will take you just a few blocks from what you may have heard of. It's called the Magnificent Mile. And that serves as a really great launching pad for our students. Um, so the city of Chicago to me, um, I moved here about two years ago and I've just been really overwhelmed with how much there is to do in the city. And I found that no matter what you're interested in, you can typically find something to enjoy in the city. So whether that's arts, um, we have for students free um, tickets to the Art Institute of Chicago, for example, whether that's sports, we have some really big name sporting events and teams. Um, whether you're really into food, we have 77 different neighborhoods to explore with fantastic food options there. And something that I really like to highlight is that while it is a really large city, we are located in the Midwest region of the US, which is known for a certain friendliness. And at least that's what I've found kind of a home here because it is really friendly and really navigable. So I mentioned that there are 77 different neighborhoods to explore and I think that that makes the fact that this is this really large metropolis a lot easier to navigate and a lot easier to dive into. Um, so if you have any questions about Chicago, feel free to drop those into the chat or Evanston. Um, but I do want to touch also on the academic side of things. So taking things back to Evanston, um, I want to explain kind of our academic philosophy. Um, so you may have heard of Northwestern because it is a really strong research university, but at its heart, it's also a liberal arts institution and it has liberal arts philosophies. Um, and what's really special about the academic kind of structure at the undergraduate level at Northwestern is that it's extremely interdisciplinary and extremely flexible in its approach. You may be wondering how that is, and it's really going to be brought on by our broad theme-based requirements for students, as well as our academic calendar, the quarter system. Um, so if you choose to apply to Northwestern, we ask that you select one of our six undergraduate schools, which I'll go over in just a minute, um, as well as a major. But if you're unsure which major you're interested in, that's okay. Um, many of our students do apply undecided. Um, in terms of kind of how things are laid out, you might be surprised to find that just about a third of your classes are going to be based on your major. The other two thirds are going to be those distributional or theme-based requirements, as well as elective coursework. And our students can definitely kind of explain a little bit more about how they've navigated those distributional requirements, but really instead of having kind of general education requirements that are quite rigid, we want students to be able to pick and choose and do a lot of academic exploration. So typically there are going to be six themes for students and students have hundreds of courses to choose from in order to satisfy those themes. Um, I do want to go over kind of our six undergraduate schools before I go any further. Um, and our largest is going to be our College of Arts and Sciences, which is broken down into 26 different academic departments. Um, about half of our students do have our Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences as their home school. Um, and no matter what your home school is, you will end up taking courses within our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, our next largest school is going to be our um, School of Engineering, and it offers 13 different specializations. Um, I see Yosef smiling a little bit, so he'll be able to explain a little bit more about what it means to be a McCormick student for sure. Um, but what's really, what really stands out about Northwestern's engineering program is its whole brain approach to engineering. So you're going to be utilizing not only the analytical side of your brain, but also the creative side um, in solving current engineering problems. Next, we have our School of Communication, um, which Karina is part of. Um, and what is really wonderful about the School of Communication and th is that it has such a variety of programs. So we have things like theater and dance. We also have radio, television, and film. And we have things all the way to human communication sciences. Next, we have our School of Journalism. 
And many universities in the US will have a major dedicated to journalism. But what really stands about, out about Northwestern is that we have an entire school dedicated to the study of innovative journalism. Next, we have our Bainan School of Music, um, which is going to be a conservatory level um, style program. That said, you will also participate in academic coursework outside of Bainan. And last, but certainly not least, um, Chloe's school um, is going to be SESPI, or the School of Education and Social Policy. Um, and this program is going to offer um, five different um, kind of factors or concentrations um, in education and social policy. What's really wonderful about this program is that it actually starts as our smallest program on campus, but due to the really flexible nature of Northwestern, students often will decide to transfer into that program as they take those distributional and elective coursework um, courses. Um, so that is a very kind of basic overview of our six undergraduate schools, but I do want to touch on what else makes us flexible, and that is the quarter system. So many schools in the US will be based on a semester system, so two semesters per year. Northwestern has four quarters per year, three of which are going to be required. Um, so for the most part, students um, during summer quarter will choose not to take courses. Instead, they'll participate in internships, research opportunities, study abroad programs. But during those three required terms, students will take four classes each for a total of 48, sometimes even 50 courses over the course of their four years on campus. On a typical semester-based system, students will take about 40 courses total. So on this quarter system, while it is going to be more quickly paced, our students find that they are able to take more classes. And this may be the reason that students at Northwestern, about 70% of our undergraduates actually have more than one academic concentration on campus. Um, and so this might be a major and a minor a major, a minor, and a certificate. There are lots of ways um, for students to kind of combine what they're interested in studying, think about what they'd like to do after college, and create an academic plan to go along with it. So I just gave you guys a ton of information. Um, I do want to touch just a little bit on kind of our what our campus is like. You'll hear a lot more from our students, but we are a mid-sized institution in the United States with about 8,000 undergraduate students. What that means is each year about 2,000 students join us as first-year students, and about 12% of our undergraduate student body is made up of international students. So there is a really strong and tight-knit international community on campus. Um, I'm sure you'll hear a little bit more there. Um, before I move forward, I do want to note that we are going to do our best to answer all of your questions today, but should you want to get in touch with a current international student, um, Martin and Karina are actually Global Wildcat coordinators through our office, meaning that they work a lot with connecting prospective students with current and current students on campus. So should you have any questions, um, I'm actually going to ask my colleague if he can add in. Um, the Global Wildcats email address, feel free to reach out. And it looks like Yosef is actually an IPA. Um, so in just a couple of actually um, IPAs on campus um, are going to be um, international peer advisors. Did I get that right? Okay, awesome. Um, and so these students are, they work within the Office of International Students and Scholars. So they really kind of work alongside our admission offices and they welcome our students to campus and get them situated in Evanston and at Northwestern. Um, so should you have any questions, Yosef can also help you guys there. Um, I do want to touch just a little bit on the admission process, um, but all of this information is on our website. So if you do want kind of a checklist of requirements, feel free to look there. I don't want you to have to like scramble to write everything down. Um, so that said, um, I do want to touch on some deadlines first, since those are important and coming up faster than I can believe. Um, so our first application deadline will be our early decision deadline, and this is going to be binding for students. So students that really know they want to be at Northwestern, they know that Northwestern or another school is their first choice, might want to consider applying early decision. That said, if you apply early decision, you are going to sign kind of a document with um, your parent or guardian as well as a school administrator stating that if you're admitted to Northwestern, 
you are going to withdraw all other applications to universities and you are going to commit to coming to Northwestern. If you are not so sure and you'd like a little bit more time to weigh your options, that's perfectly fine. And that's going to be what the majority of our students apply doing. They choose that regular decision deadline. Um, if you choose regular decision, this is not going to be binding. Um, and it's important to note that we are going to require the same materials either way. Before I move on, I should probably share what those actual dates are. Don't want to forget that. Um, so for early decision, our deadline is going to be November 1st. And for regular decision this year, that deadline is going to be January 3rd. Um, so in terms of what we need you to submit at Northwestern, I like to divide things into the qualitative and quantitative pieces. We'll start with those quantitative pieces. And I know even just in this student panel, our students were coming from very different curricula. So it's important to note that we will need your secondary school transcripts, but don't worry too much about which curriculum you're a part of. We're going to be looking at context when we're reviewing applications. So I get a lot of questions from students. Should I be taking an AP curriculum? Should I be doing an IB curriculum? Should I do my, my country's national curriculum? We're really going to be looking at the curriculum that's available to you. We're not gonna compare apples to oranges. Um, and we really are going to be looking at, you know, the classes that you're taking, whether or not there are rigorous or additional rigorous courses to take, and ultimately how you're doing in those classes. Um, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense and adds a little bit of context to this. Um, beyond that, um, we typically require an SAT or ACT score. You may have heard Northwestern is going to be test optional for the next year. Um, for this kind of coming application cycle. And what that means is that we totally understand that there is not a whole lot of availability of tests. So if you're not able to take those tests since they aren't available, we are not, you're not going to be disadvantaged in the admission process. If you have been able to take a test and you think that that test is going to add to kind of your application, you can feel free to submit those, those scores. Um, I do wanna note that for international applicants, we do require you to submit proof of English language proficiency because you are going to be taking all of your classes in English and learning in English. Um, and so we have some updated English proficiency requirements this year, definitely check out our website, but we accept the TOEFL, including the TOEFL at home, as well as the IELTS, including the IELTS indicator exam. And finally, we are now accepting the Duolingo English exam. Um, and so lots of options there. Definitely check out our website for additional details. Um, those were kind of the quantitative pieces, but for me, the qualitative pieces are really what bring an application to life. So those pieces are going to be your um, activities, your essays, as well as your teacher recommendations. Um, in terms of those activities. I understand that extracurricular activities in a lot of ways can be really US centric and it can be such a US thing. That said, we want to know how you're spending your time outside of school. So are you taking care of a younger or older relative? Are you part of a religious organization? Do you play a sport or an instrument? Um, are you learning a language? Those kinds of things, make sure to include them because that's gonna show us how you might spend your time um, on our campus. Next, we have our essays. We have the Common App Essay as well as the Coalition App Essay. Um, so you'll choose whichever of the um, applications you'd like to submit. I typically recommend that students make a list of the colleges they're applying to and complete the app that makes the most sense. Either way, we're utilizing a holistic review process. Um, so we're going to be looking at kind of all of these pieces in order to make an informed decision. And we're really gonna evaluate, you know, how you fit onto our campus as a student and as a person. Um, in addition to those essays from the applications themselves, we do have an optional but highly recommended um, statement basically asking why are you interested in Northwestern? For that, I suggest that you do your research. I know that all things are really online and it's not possible right now to visit college campuses, but take advantage of the virtual opportunities available to you. Really dig in and think about how you envision your Northwestern experience might be. Finally, um, we have our letters of recommendation. We require one from a school counselor or school administrator, as well as one from a teacher. Lots of times as I work with international students, students don't have a designated um, 
kind of school counselor, and that's okay. Um, a school administrator, your principal, your headmaster can work as well. You are able to supplement with additional letters of recommendation. So let's say um, a community member knows you really well in a different way. Um, that community member can certainly add an additional letter of recommendation. All I ask is that you do not submit 14 or 15 letters of recommendation that all say the exact same thing. Um, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I do want to touch on financial aid at Northwestern. Um, Northwestern does um, commit to meeting 100% of every admitted student's demonstrated financial need at the university. Things work a little bit differently for U.S. citizens um, and permanent residents, meaning that we are need blind if you are a U.S. citizen and permanent resident. This means that we are not taking into account your request for aid when making a decision. For international students, though, we are need aware, and that means that we may have to consider your request for aid in making that ultimate admission decision. Northwestern does have a really robust financial aid budget. That said, it is ultimately limited, and that's where that need aware piece comes into play. Um, when I say that we will ple we pledge to meet 100% of students' demonstrated need, that means that we're going to bridge the gap between the cost of attendance and what a family can pay. And what a family can pay is really going to be based on the CSS profile. So just a quick math problem before I um, hand things over to the students. So let's say the cost of Northwestern per year is about 75,000 US dollars. And based on the CSS profile, your family can um, fund 20,000 US dollars. Um, 75 minus 20 is $55,000 a year. And if we admit you as a student, we are pledging to meet that gap. And that $55,000 will be covered in the form of scholarships and grants from the university, which do not need to be paid back. Um, so I hope that I covered everything. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our office. Um, at this time, I'm going to dig into some of these questions. Um, let's take a look. One moment, please. So, some questions about, for Karina actually. So we're gonna dig into some academic questions first. Um, there's a student who is interested in the theater program um, and the student's hoping to learn just a little bit more about the structure of it um, and also asks whether or not a portfolio or an audition is required. Karina, do you mind taking the lead on that one? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, yay, I'm so excited. The thesis program at Northwestern is honestly incredible. Um, so basically the way that it's structured is there's a first year rotation, which every first year student has to take. It's four classes and it sort of gets everybody acclimatized to what learning theater at Northwestern looks like. Um, so your first quarter, you'll take a class with your entire cohort, which has more to do with like theater history and criticism and literature. And um, my first year, we had a lot of Chicago professionals come in to speak to us. And it was just a really great experience to not only get to know the way that Northwestern thinks about theater, but also the way that Chicago thinks about theater. Then we have a class called Voice for Performance, which is which you'll take with a smaller group of people. It's not singing, it's, um, it's voice techniques. Um, and then there's kind of a follow up to that first like history and criticism class. And it takes you into a more specific subject. So when I was a first year, my specific subject was British political theater, which was quite um, great for me <laughs> because it was just like right what I wanted to learn. Um, and then the, uh, the last one is production in context, which you'll basically learn about the production elements of theater and also get to serve backstage on a Wirt Center show, which is our, the Wirt Center is our theater department, um, like main stage productions. And then we also have lots of student productions. So that's sort of the first year rotation. And then after that, depending on what you want to specialize in, whether that's performance or design, you sort of pick your track. Um, so I'm taking an acting sequence, but I still have to take a few classes in design and a few classes in theater history and literature. That would work the same way if you were taking the lighting design track, you would take all of your courses there, but you would still have to take like at least two performance classes. Um, and you would have to take history, literature and criticism classes within the theater department as well. So that's sort of the overall scope of things. There's definitely a lot of room to take um, 
more classes outside of your sequence. Like if you're just curious within theater to take lots of things, we have a really robust playwriting module. We have a really, really amazing um, TYA, um, Theater for Young Audiences program. And we have some great faculty there as well. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how the program is structured. And then in terms of an audition, auditions are not required to be admitted to our theater program. But the one thing that you should keep in mind is that there is a cap on the amount of people admitted to the program, which I believe is around 100 students. So if you want to be in the theater program, you have to apply into it. Um, so for example, I knew that I wanted to study theater and history, but I had to apply into theater in the School of Communication to secure a place for myself there. And then once I got to Northwestern, I declared, I explored some things, but then I declared my double major in history. Um, and it's just a lot harder to get into the program once you're there, but you haven't declared it yet because you have to like wait until someone leaves the program or chooses a different kind of track. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to note. And then if you're interested in musical theater, that's when you will have to audition. Um, auditions occur around October, November. You come in with a song, there's a dance audition, and then you have to write a little paper about why you want to be in the certificate program. Um, and then they just come out with a list of people who are in the program. But that's the only thing that you'd have to audition for um, in terms of like an academic program within our department. I hope that helped. <laughs> that was okay. Thank you, Karina. Um, so I did not discuss this, but it's a great question. So um, lots of students are interested in a business career. Um, and I'm getting questions about, you know, what majors or programs um, do we recommend for students interested in business? Um, and there was a specific question about a student interested in investment banking. Um, so I can definitely give kind of my experience and my recommendation to students, but if anybody does have um, specific stories or um, recommendations, I will say everyone that um, there is a website on Northwest or a Northwestern website surrounding different roads to business. So if you look up R, the number two and B at Northwestern, um, my colleague should be able to include that um, in the chat, it'll explain different ways that students get into business. So I will say economics is a really popular major within our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, but beyond that, there is a CESB major, um, learning and organizational change that many students, especially interested in consulting, go into. Um, and then beyond that, there are several certificate programs um, through our Kellogg School of Management. So this is a graduate level program. Um, that said, students will sometimes pursue those certificates. So uh, does anybody have any additional information regarding, um, regarding those business opportunities? Um, I, I have nothing to do with investment banking, but I have a few friends who do. So I can share a little bit about like what I hear from them, if that's helpful. I know there are a lot of um, curricular and extracurricular opportunities to do with investment banking. Um, there's a lot of recruitment that goes on on our campus with regards to summer internships. Um, so I had a friend who was very intensely uh, going through recruitment in this fall quarter for an internship he's doing this summer. And then in the winter quarter, he went through recruitment for an internship he'll do after his junior year. So he has like all of that secured um, and that all occurred like on Northwestern's campus. He was like wearing suits every day, that kind of thing. Um, there's also like you can, you can, there are a lot of business opportunities within Kellogg, um, even though it's a graduate school, undergraduate students can be research assistants, take certificates within Kellogg. And so I think they find Kellogg to be a really, really great resource for them because a lot of people who, a lot of graduate students who study there are sort of like on their tracks to be in a career field that these undergraduate students are also interested in. There are also, um, um, business fraternities and, and Greek societies that, sort of like give you the more networking and social aspect of being in investment banking. Um, there are a couple of them, I believe. I, I couldn't go into specifics, but if you, if whoever this is, if you want to know more, we can connect you with our friends who do this a lot. Uh, yeah, like um, adding on to what Karina was saying, I think I know two off the top of my head, AKSI and DSB, which I do not know what those actually stand for, but that's something you can Google. Um, and I just wanted to add that I'm actually a learning and organization or change major, which is just easier to say LOC. Um, and to kind of tell you what the major is about, it's not very, uh, I guess, like technically technical focus. It's a lot more uh, concepts, I would say, like very application 
you have like a couple case studies that you look at. You also look at bigger themes that uh, you would use to maybe analyze, you know, an organization that's kind of inherent in its name, learning and organizational change. So you can take that major quite literally um, in its name. And a lot of people do go into consulting, um, even like human resources um, and kind of like in that vein. Thank you both so much for that. Um, again, if you do want some more information, feel free to check out that Roads to Business website. I think it gives a really comprehensive view of, you know, what opportunities there are academically at least. Um, so we are getting as well some questions regarding the possibility of internships for international students, um, especially being on an F1 student visa. So if anybody has participated in an internship, um, you know, how, how does that internship search work? If anyone wants to kind of explain our career advancement office um, or individual department offices, um, that would be fantastic. Does anybody? Martin? Yeah. Um... I don't have like a ton of information on it, but I have a ton of friends who do internships in Chicago and most of them are also internationals. Um, there's several different ways that you can go about it. There's, for example, the Chicago Field Studies Program, which offers um, classes basically, but uh, instead of spending like a full week load of classes uh, at school, you, you do an internship and then you get those counted as credits for you. Um, there are several tracks, for example, public health um, or yeah, that's the only one that I know actually, but there are several tracks that you can uh, look up on our websites where you can basically apply to the program, then you get into Chicago Field Studies, and then the Department of Chicago Field Studies helps you to get placed into a specific um, internship or company that is based either in Evanston or Chicago. Um, and this happens in all four quarters of the year, so I know many students who uh, take a normal class load during the three normal quarters, and then in the summer they do an internship with Chicago Field Studies and they earn four extra credits while they're doing that. Um, however, I have also a bunch of friends who are doing internships on their own. Um, and it's perfectly possible as an F1 visa holder to do that in the US. Uh, there's a few obstacles that you have to go through before that if you're doing it outside of school. However, our international office has a lot of support programs um, to help you with that. If you wanna do uh, an internship internationally, that's also possible. Um, and there's also a lot of grant programs, for example, SICB. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head what that stands for, but it is a lump sum of around $3,500 uh, that you are being paid to do an internship that can cover living expenses um, and any other expenses that occur, occur during your internship. So there's a lot of uh, support available and Northwestern is always behind you if you wanna do an internship in any kind of field, whether it's in the US or anywhere else in the world. Kind of a random link um, com combining the two questions we just had. I had a friend that did Chicago field studies and he's interested in investment banking. So, yes. <laughs> I'll also just plug our Northwestern Career Advancements really quickly. It's a really, really amazing resource. I literally just use their packets all the time. Like I've been using them all the time because I can't go into the office itself right now from London. Um, but they have just amazing resources. The people there are really, really helpful. There are specific advisors based on what school that you're in. So I meet with an advisor who specifically works from with students from the School of Communication. Um, and I've been there multiple times to go over cover letters, resumes, all that kind of thing. We also have a platform called Handshake, which is kind of like, um, kind of like LinkedIn, where you can see like job postings and things like that. But it's based on your academic institution. So like you'll have access to it because you're a Northwestern student um, and you can see postings there. Um, and then like those employers can also see your Northwestern student profile and like you can see like what preferences of theirs you match. So that's really helpful as well. Um, and yeah, so the, the only thing is like if you wanted to do an internship in the US, you could also just like do Google search and find it yourself. Um, but the only thing you would have to look for is whether or not they basically like need you to have work authorization um, and if they do need you to have it while you are a student you can get that there's this thing that we have called cpt um, and it's basically what your a visa allows you it's like when your visa allows you to do an internship because technically we're not allowed to work off campus so to do that internship you just have to apply for this authorization which is very straightforward to get and then you can start doing your internship um, so yeah 
Thank you guys. Um, so along the lines of internships um, comes research. Um, and we know that, you know, there's a lot of research going on at Northwestern and a ton of money is kind of poured into undergraduate research itself. Um, so we did get some questions um, regarding, you know, how does that research how does research work? Um, a student specifically is interested in neurology, um, but you know, how, if anyone's gotten into research, how did you go about that process? Yes, sir? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that field is quite close to mine, I would say to biomedical engineering and getting into research and working for the lab at Northwestern is actually a very easy process and you get a lot of help along the way. Uh, because of our amazing professors who run those labs and also because we have amazing labs. And so the whole process, I would say, is exactly opposite of what you would expect. It's very calm. It's everybody is making every step of the way very comfortable for you so that we as students really enjoy uh, doing what we like and, uh, and, and essentially doing what we want to do in the future. And, and so I think that there are a lot of panels. There are special days. Uh, like career days where a lot of companies uh, come to present themselves and they present different opportunities that can be either internship as uh, we spoke with earlier or research which which can also be paid and but it does not have to be it depends on on your will it depends on our, on on your will how want how much you want to commit to that you can choose the hours you want to work you can specify what would you like to see what would you like to learn it's basically an environment in which you can get skills that you will need immediately uh, after when you start looking for a job or immediately after when you go to a grad school. So I think that our university really takes care of students, as I said, along every step of this way. Thank you so much. So um, another question we got was, you know, what does it look like to get a campus job? So I know several of you have campus jobs. Um, I, I will say that as part of international students' financial aid packages at Northwestern, if they are receiving financial aid, um, work study can sometimes be a piece of that financial aid um, financial aid package for domestic students, for international students. We would not require them to work. That said, there are still going to be opportunities to get a campus job on campus with some um, with some um, limitations given visas. But Karina and Martin, would you mind kind of touching on this? Yeah, um, so as Maddie pointed out, we're Global Wildcat Coordinators. So we work directly with Maddie um, and for Maddie. Um, so we are the people who are in touch with the admissions uh, office and we can get you in touch with other people who are in the school and who you would want to talk to who have more information than for example we could have about certain programs um, and it was pretty I wouldn't say it's easy um, as an international student to get a job but it's also not impossible it might take some time and effort but obviously everything will pay off if you consistently try um, so I personally only work for uh, Maddie but I also have another job um, for a professor who I'm doing research with, but instead of just like do, doing the research is also an actual job. So the work that I do for him is actually paid. Um, additionally, uh, I have a bunch of friends who are very, very committed to their campus jobs. One of my flatmates, for example, uh, June, she works in the center desk in our student center in Norris, and she absolutely loves that job so much. Um, it's sometimes hard to get her to shut up because she's talking about it so much. But it definitely shows that it's possible to get a job once you commit to it, once you like look out for any positions. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not impossible. Awesome, thank you. Um, so let me take a look. I think there are a few more questions so far and then we can do some kind of fun questions, um, kind of random ones. Um, let's take a look. So we have a question um, from a student about health insurance, um, how it works for international students specifically. Um, so just for the people joining us, in, um, health insurance is going to be part of, um, it's kind of a requirement for students to have, and we do have lots of um, facilities on campus for students. Um, but from the student perspective, does anybody want to share any 
experiences or tips? Yeah, Martin. Yeah, I can go again. I actually have an appointment tomorrow at our health center, so prepare for that. Um, as, as a student on financial aid, I'm automatically covered by NU SHIP, which is the mandatory insurance, I think, for all, in all international students, unless you have an equivalent um, that covers you. But basically, NU SHIP covers anything that you need from our health center. Um, so all my appointments are free. All my, for example, I'm getting several uh, tests tomorrow that are like blood tests um, that are also free and covered by NU SHIP. Um, however, if you want to access healthcare that's like outside of our university, for example, in a hospital or, or an ambulance, um, those are obviously subject to deductibles by any ship. So um, it's important to inform yourself how much, for example, a procedure could be uh, before you go and get it, um, especially if you're not very, uh, very wealthy and can afford US healthcare um, very easily. So it definitely sometimes pays off even to go home and get um, any procedures done there. But mostly anything that you would need in a normal, um, I would say student life, like unless you're, you, you need like a heart transplant or anything, um, it's covered by NU SHIP and it's, uh, it's fairly accessible and easy to access on campus as we have a clinic uh, right here in the middle. Um, I'd also like to state that there is uh, there are lots of mental health services available to students. So it's through um, what's called CAPS. So if you do have questions about that, feel free to look a little bit more into um, CAPS as well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, actually for CAPS and therapy and mental health, um, and USHIP also covers therapy. So right now you don't even have to pay for therapy if you need it or if you just want to try it out to see how it works for you. Um, that's also covered by our insurance here. Thank you. Um, so we have some questions about, you know, what are some international clubs and organizations on campus? Which is a great question. Anyone want to touch on some of the international groups? Karina? <laughs> yeah, I, I can go. I have a lot of friends who are involved in the International Student Association, which I would say is probably like the biggest group that we have that serves all international students. It's really wonderful. I'm not a member of it myself, but there's no like limit to who can participate in the events that they put on. So it's really, really, it's really great. Um, I don't know if anyone here is in ISA and can maybe talk about it more. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, I am. I just didn't want to talk because I've already been talking so much. Um, yeah, so International Students Association is a group by and for international students. So we run it ourselves and it's like split into different sections so some of our group members are uh responsible for organizing the social events like parties or um like other social stuff that you can do for example like a like a trip somewhere together um then we have a branch that is about philanthropy so they organize service trips in chicago where you can participate and yet again, another group is responsible for organizing um, talks and informative evenings where we invite speakers who can then talk um, about like an international topic to the international student population or also like the rest of the student population. Those events are um, fully accessible by everyone. So it's not only international people. In fact, there's a lot of Americans also in the International Student Association. So that's a nice thing to like mingle and maybe meet some Americans who are more interested in meeting other international students, which is pretty nice. I, I would just like to add to that, that uh, besides ISO, which is, I would say, like a, a roof organization for all international students, there are smaller uh, cultural organizations uh, like, let's say, Korean or of the whole Asia of, or Latin, for Latin students. Uh, for example, I am a part of uh, Italian student organization because of the situation that we are uh, close neighbors we share Adriatic Sea and also as a my third language I studied the uh, Italian language and thus I, 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 I wanted to you know uh, get to know more about Italian uh, culture with Italian students and with American Italian students and, and as well as uh, Martin said with students that have no connection with that culture or eventually country but like to learn uh, how that culture works or like the food or something like that. So there are many, uh, many events uh, where uh, these kind of things are organized. Thank you both. 
Um, I think it's worth noting that um, you've probably attended several of these university chats um, and universities for the most part have hundreds, if not thousands of organizations. Um, we have more than 500 student organizations on campus. Um, but what I find really cool is that more than 100 of those, so more than 20% of those are going to be cultural or identity based groups. Um, so feel free to visit what's called called Wildcat Connection, and you can browse all of those different groups to get a feel for what you may want to get involved in on campus, um, just as kind of a tip. Um, so we do have one, an additional academic question. Um, and we had a student that's interested in combining engineering and music. So I don't believe any of you are combining those specific um, concentrations, um, but it is worth noting for our students joining us that at Northwestern, we really do want you to combine um, those things that you are passionate about, whether or not they seem like they go together. Um, and that kind of interdisciplinary approach really helps students to sometimes combine these types of things. Um, so for any of our students that are maybe combining two different, yeah, Yosef, do you want to kind of touch on um, yeah. touch on that possibility of combining those two concentrations? Actually, very interestingly, I, I studied uh, at elementary music school here in Montenegro and uh, I played guitar. So I was very closely looking into the possibility of doing exactly that, biomedical engineering and doing a minor or something like that in music. But what I found out for me uh, was that I, I am really passionate about engineering and I found that there are a lot of stuff I want to explore more in depth. But that did not stop me from taking some music classes separately as maybe my elective classes or maybe as my team. Uh, and so I think that uh, the possibility is surely there and you can do it, obviously. Uh, and I think it can be very interesting combining these two fields. As we know that music has a lot of things that connect the way we study and the way we approach sounds and life and also very connected with physics and thus I, I, I totally understand the point that the student is coming from combining these two amazing fields. Thank you so much um, and working with lots of students um, over the past couple of years I've found that at Northwestern, we really encourage students to combine those things. So um, if you're interested in two fields that might not seem to go together, um, there are also going to be professors on campus that want to, you know, highlight that interdisciplinary, learn about two, um, two concentrations. So there are lots of opportunities to get involved in research in these things. Um, lots of opportunities there. Um, now I do want to touch on some additional pieces with kind of campus itself. So um, it looks like I think Yosef may be near or on a beach today. So warmer weather. How was the adjustment to colder weather in the Chicagoland area? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I, I've got the worst out of it in my first year. That's what they told me. That's what the people from Chicago told me because uh, at that first winter we had uh, that famous polar vortex and the, the temperature of minus 50. Uh, for me, it was extremely interesting and uh, actually I'm using seeing how the waves uh, on the lake freeze at night, you know, and seeing all the, the fog and uh, I don't know. I, I, th I think, you know, we are young, we are students, and it's, it's not that difficult to adjust. Some, some people might struggle, but, but I think sharing it with friends and sharing uh, snow and, uh, you know, everything that comes with it, everything that comes with those kind of uh, situations, I think it can be very fun. Does anyone else have any experiences they want to share? Chloe? Um, yeah, so I'm, I think I'm the only first year here. So I actually came uh, like the year after the polar vortex. And I think maybe people like hyped it up so much. I was expecting something like the Arctic. Um, and honestly, like I don't mean to sugarcoat or like baby anyone, but it's like not too bad. I will admit that the weather is very inconsistent. Like it kind of keeps you on your toes, but at the same time, like it's very exciting, you know? Like on a Monday, you're on the beach, you know, you're at the lake, Phil, you're tanning on Friday, you're wearing boots and like a heavy down jacket. Um, and I think that's just something you kind of need to get used to. I kind of like had to normalize um, checking my weather app and looking out the window 
and really just being ready for it to change in the middle of the day. And so the big tip is layering. Um, also, people use Fahrenheit in America. Just look out for that. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys both. Um, I will say I'm I'm from the Midwest. I really enjoy the fact that there are four very different seasons. So while winter can be a bit harsh, um, I don't see that it slows our students down. I think they're still getting involved, still enjoying um, Evanston and Chicago. Um, and then there is a lot to look forward to in the spring and summer and even fall months. So um, lots there. Um, we do have a question kind of about, you know, what is student life like? We talked a little bit about some of the organizations you can be part of, um, but the question is, what is student life like in terms of school spirit, traditions, living situations, etc.? So if anyone wants to touch on those things, that would be fantastic. And then I think I might have you guys go around and tell me your favorite campus tradition as well, <laughs> if you have one. Anyone want to answer this? I can go. Um, I think school spirit at Northwestern is, is really high. I think especially like in sports seasons, people really enjoy going to games and tailgating and things like that. And just like really having a lot of fun together. We like our school spirits, Purple Pride. Um, I just think that overall in terms of student life, Northwestern is a really, really incredible and fun place to be because I think it's like you get this really, really high academic caliber and you almost expect it to like maybe not be as much fun but I, I don't know what it is about Northwestern students like I just feel like everyone I have met is so lively and so energetic and so creative and so fun loving and then the next day you might see them pulling an all-nighter in like the most quiet part of the library so you kind of definitely get like the duality at Northwestern which makes life great um we have a lot of traditions I there's one of my traditions it's kind of tied to a larger tradition which maybe somebody can talk about the rock um but we have this rock in the middle of our campus and there's there's a tradition that most like that everyone can take part in but then there's this other tradition within the theater community we have um, an organization called the dolphin show and it's basically the it's like it's just a huge 100 percent entirely student produced student designed student acted everything musical it's like it's so large scale and every year as a fundraiser, they do a show like in the middle of the night around the rock. And so like the whole community, the whole theater community just goes out and watches people perform um, in the middle of the night, like these spoofs of musicals. Like my first year, it was Mamma Mia. My second year, it was The Little, the little Mermaid. Um, and it's just like, it's such a fun tradition because it's just like, pure chaos, um, <laughs> which is my favorite part. So yeah, but maybe someone could talk about what we actually are supposed to do with the rock. Um, yeah, I was gonna mention the rock. It's it's not that creative of a name, I think, because it's literally a rock. Um, and what students do, student organizations or individuals, they you know like paint the rock to advertise an event. You know, maybe send a message to a loved one or something like that. Trying to send a message, basically. Um, so every once in a while, it kind of changes like design and color obviously and kind of like the rules behind it is um, the organization or individual has to camp outside uh, for 24 hours next to the rock in order to like have ownership you know and paint it and I've never personally partake in, in this tradition but I'm going to tell you now like being um, you know like walking home a little later on the night it's in the middle of winter it's like two degrees negative five degrees celsius and you just see people shivering outside the rock it's it's kind of fun, not in like a weird way, but it's also just like nice to see that camaraderie, um, kind of this like same driven goal of just trying to paint the rock. And I know it does kind of sound silly, uh, but it's also really fun. Like every morning seeing something different splash on it. And it actually has like advertised a lot of events to me before. So like it's effective, like I've seen it and I was like, oh, like that's an event like I could attend or I forgot it was Mother's Day or something cool like that. So we are running a little bit low on time, but if anyone wants to give their favorite campus tradition, that would be fantastic. Um, Yosef, do you have one? Yeah, uh, uh, something that is really, I would say, uh, great for international students and something that really gives us the sense of family is a famous wild, uh, Wildcat Dash, where, where when the freshmen run on the Ryan football field, and see the full stadium, see the stadium of students, of our family, of our new home, 
and I think that that was the exact point for me when I when I knew that I found something special and that the community is very special and that everybody is supportive there. And also another thing that is very unique for freshmen is freshman dance. And that is something that stays with the whole generation and something that we all share and something that one day we will all once again get together and perform this silly dance that, that only our generation has. Yeah, so I, I, I think there are many others, but I don't know, these two these are really sticking to my mind. Anyone else? If not, that's okay. Martin. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mine's maybe not like a, an actual campus tradition, but as a tradition for our department in Eastern European studies. So once uh, at the end of every academic year, we all get together as a department. Um, and given that Eastern European studies is a very small department, it's only around 20, 30 people who show up who are there. Um, and you just kind of like chill around, you have some snacks with your professors, you get to know them, you talk to them, and it's a really, really nice way to like meet other students as well as other professors in your departments and have super interesting talks about, uh, well, obviously your major because that's hopefully something that you're interested in. Um, but it's a very cute little like family atmosphere that I absolutely love. And um, this year we had it over Zoom, unfortunately, but uh, I'm looking forward for that to happen again in the next upcoming two years. Awesome. Um, well, we are out of time, unfortunately. Thank you all so much for joining us and for listening and learning a little bit more about Northwestern, especially the student experience. And thank you, um, Martin, Chloe, Karina, and Yosef for volunteering your time and for explaining, you know, how you've engaged with campus um, over these past couple of years. Um, I did want to touch on one quick thing. Um, it looks like we did get a question kind of about um, things regarding COVID. So I know that lots of times exams have been postponed or things have changed a little bit. Um, these things we definitely understand are happening. Um, and should you have any specific questions about, you know, a postponed exam or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to our admission office and we will um, kind of get back to you on a case by case basis. Um, but again, please understand that we know that um, a lot is going on outside of your and our control. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Global Wildcats. I'm sure all of our volunteers would be happy to connect with you. Um, and one last plug, um, I know this is on YouTube. If you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, be sure to do so. We have tons of awesome um, content planned um, for this fall as we move into kind of a virtual recruitment season. Um, I hope everyone's safe and healthy um, and I hope everyone has a really great start to their week. Um, thanks again for joining us and we look forward to working with you more. Bye everyone. <laughs>